survivors began their journey grateful to be leaving behind the controversy over the disastrous Yemeni rescue attempt which left four of their party dead. Lawrence Whitehouse, whose wife Margaret was killed, confirmed today that a colonel from the Yemeni secret police asked him to change his account of what happened during the gun battle. Just before he left, he paid tribute to his wife. I have had 27 years with a very wonderful person, widely respected, well-loved and well-known. I've escaped death by thousands of an inch. And another former hostage has been describing how she was marched at gunpoint through a hail of bullets and had to wrestle a Kalashnikov from her captor's hands when he was shot. He was actually still holding the other end of it and we ended up pulling, trying to pull it off each other for uh, a short time and uh, then just in order to, um, I, I basically I sort of kicked him in the face and then I just stomped my right foot down on top of his head and that gave me leverage, more leverage and more strength to pull the gun out of his hands and as soon as I had the gun then I just ran as fast as I could towards the soldiers. But as the group headed for the airport, four Scotland Yard detectives arrived in the capital Sanaa to conduct their own investigation. They'll be working closely with a team of FBI agents. And here, for the second time in two days, Yemen's ambassador to London is at the Foreign Office tonight because of continuing dissatisfaction about the conflicting accounts of the botched rescue. Andrew Bomford, BBC News. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr George Carey, has called for greater tolerance to be shown towards refugees. In his New Year message, Dr Carey said refugees had often brought rich gifts to their adopted countries. In his New Year address, the Pope recalled the atrocities of the 20th century and welcomed the progress made on human rights over the last 50 years. Millions of people across the world have been celebrating the arrival of the New Year. In Britain, most of the festivities passed off peacefully, with Edinburgh staging the largest event. But abroad, not all the celebrations went as smoothly. In Edinburgh, a golden greeting to 1999. The authorities had hoped that 200,000 revellers would turn up to be dazzled. They weren't disappointed. A few hours later in New York, celebrations that were visible, according to the organisers, on the planet Mars. But elsewhere, very different scenes. French riot police faced stones and cars were set alight in the streets of Strasbourg and Mulhaus. Whilst in the Philippines, more than 400 people were injured by firecrackers. This one, oh, deadly! At least 10 people needed to have parts of their fingers amputated. In the American state of Maryland, this January the 1st is a turning point. Some families are heading for the hills, armed with supplies. They're convinced that now is the time to escape modern society and the computer bug that could strike on January the 1st, 2000. No, no, life will go on. We're a resilient critter running around on this rock, but it's just going to be different. I think we're going to be setting ourselves back to about the 1800s. The organisers of last night's parties have something else to worry about now, though. Working out how to do it a thousand times better next time around, as the countdown begins all over again. John Young, BBC News. That's it for now. The next national news is at a quarter past ten. Good evening. <laughs> Hello again. The wind and the rain will be major ingredients of the weather over the next few days. It's been fairly mild today. The wind's up from the south. But as you can see, plenty of showers have been moving in across the west and the north of the country. And now we're seeing the first signs of some wet weather coming in across southwestern parts of Ireland. So tonight we'll see some heavy rain at times moving eastwards across the whole of the British Isles. And we'll see some strong to gale force winds too with gusts up to 50 miles an hour around many hills and coasts as the night goes along. So here it comes then, the wind strengthening already out in the southwest, and we'll find those gale force winds sweeping eastwards, followed in turn by clearer and showery weather. So by the end of the night, the rain still fairly persistent up in the far northeast of Scotland, down through these more eastern counties of England, with a crop of showers coming in onto western coasts and hills once again. Temperatures are fairly academic actually, about three to five degrees tonight. Well, that low pressure anchored to the northwest of Scotland for much of the day tomorrow, and as you can see, lots of wind and there'll be plenty of showers coming through as well. The major feature of the weather tomorrow will be that wind, of course. There will be gales out in the west, and it'll feel cold too. A colder day than today with temperatures about 7 or 8 degrees, probably the best on offer for most parts of the country. 
First thing in the morning then, some rain in the northeast, some rain down through East Anglia and the southeast as well. A crop of showers already in the west, and some of those will be heavy, thundery, with some hail and some sleet and snow on the higher ground. Just a few showers getting across to the east and south of the Pennines into East Anglia, but there will be quite a number of heavy ones too coming in off the English Channel across southeastern parts of England. So that's how things will pan out during Saturday afternoon with gales, especially around western Scotland, where the showers could merge to give some longer spells of wet weather. And then late in the day, probably during the evening, we'll see yet more wet and windy weather coming into the southwest approaches. And that rain will spread across the whole of England and Wales up into eastern Scotland eventually as we go through the day on Sunday. Late on, yet another spell of wet and windy weather coming back into the southwest. Elsewhere, for much of northern Britain throughout the day on Sunday, it's a mixture of sunshine and showers. But as you can see, temperatures not too exciting, though fairly mild for a time, despite the wind in the far south. Bye-bye. Do you want me to put phone down on you again? Because I will. Meet Claudia, 29. She lives and works with her dad. I did offer. So, I did offer Queen Declines. Then you should insist. And there is ways of insisting without it being... There's ways of insisting when you have the staff to do it. But at that time, we had no one available to do anything, Dad. That's how it was. No, I mean, did you ask Carmelo? Did you ask Carmelo? No. Right, that's it. That's all I'm saying, isn't it? You didn't ask Carmelo. Yeah, yeah. Meet the people of Paddington Green. Monday at 9.30 on BBC One. The day's news in the southeast now on BBC One with Mike Embley. Good evening from News from South East. Thousands of workers in the city are spending the new year at their desks, preparing for the start of trading in the euro on Monday. Special facilities are being laid on to help them get through it all. Ian War reports. The start of the new year heralding the birth of a new currency. The delivery of the newborn euro meant an extra early start for many city workers. Some arrived at 4 a.m. Some had never left their desks. Others, like Andy Maloney, celebrated the new year before crawling into work at seven. It was my mum's 50th, actually, so I had a party at her house. Um, so I had to take it a bit easy, but I'm all right now. The city has never seen a New Year's Day quite like it. Banks laid on catering facilities, wine bars opened especially, and the Waterloo and City Line ran for the first time. Some 30,000 workers have been drafted in over the New Year period to convert financial systems to the single currency before the markets open on Monday. In the event, this historic occasion seems to have passed off quietly and without a hitch. Ian War, Newsroom South East, The City. Police have issued a new appeal for help in solving the murder of a teenager in Hackney, East London. 19-year-old Kasia Thomas from Bow was involved in an argument last New Year's Eve at the Powerhouse nightclub in Waterton Road. It's now known as Club Space. His body was found nearby. Detectives have distributed posters and leaflets in the hope of jogging the memories of club goers. Well, I'm still hopeful because we know that there was an excess of 1,800 uh, party revellers on that evening. Uh, my team have, in fact, traced and uh, interviewed the greater majority of those people. But I'm sure there are still some there that may still be able to help this inquiry. Sport now. This weekend marks one of the highlights of the footballing year, the FA Cup third round, where Premiership and First Division clubs enter the competition. The holders, Arsenal, play Preston on Monday, but tomorrow it's an all South East affair as Watford travel to Tottenham. Geraint Hughes reports. Footballers seem to lead the life of Riley, but come rain or shine at New Year, they're out on the training pitch. Watford are putting the final touches to their preparations to face Tottenham. And for one Watford player, it's a return to White Hart Lane that could be fruitful. We have uh, a chance in this game because, uh, I mean, Watford is not uh, a bad side. And uh, the fact that uh, we're playing in second division doesn't mean that we cannot qualify for the next round. Overcoming Spurs is one thing, reaching Wembley like they did back in 1984 is another. But Graham Taylor is back in charge of team affairs after recovering from a serious throat illness. A full house is expected at White Hart Lane, where the pressure is all on the home side. Get I Hughes, News from South East. 
And now the Millennium Dome, but not as we know it. The first picture of it, as seen from space, has just been published. The dome, showing up here as a bright white sphere on the Greenwich Peninsula, was photographed by a satellite orbiting more than 500 miles above the Earth. But you only had to go to central London this afternoon to see the annual New Year's Day parade. Hundreds of thousands did. Organisers say it was the biggest and most spectacular yet. Rita Mongiardino was there too. Thousands of performers and hundreds of thousands of spectators converged on central London to watch the 13th New Year parade. 2,000 American cheerleaders dominated the show. Many of them spent months raising money for their first trip to London. I'm so excited and I'm glad to be in London. This is great. It's just different. I like got all the Americans over doing all their bit and everything. No, it's nice. <laughs> there were also many familiar London faces. It just starts the new year off really nice. It makes everybody happy and everybody celebrates New Year in London together. This year's show has been the biggest so far. Organisers promise next year's Millennium Parade will be even bigger. 12,000 performers have already signed up to celebrate the arrival of the year 2000. Rita Monjardino, Newsroom South East in Westminster. And from us, of course, we're back with more South East News around 10.30 on BBC One. For now, a very good evening to you. I don't want a concrete floor. It looks really good. So it should. The amount of work that's gone into it. The skillful. The more of an expert than me. The willful. I can't believe you're getting me involved in this. And the wise. Well, do you know what you mean? I suppose so. With a new series of transformations. Nice. Changing Rooms starts Wednesday at 8 on BBC One. The new issue of Radio Times contains features on forthcoming BBC programmes, together with complete listings for all television and major satellite channels. Jim's losing control this Saturday in the Generation Game at 5.55. Knowles as unpredictable as ever in the House Party at 6.55. Then at 7.45, Dale Winton reflects on the best of the National Lottery from 98. Saturday's Entertainment on BBC One. Big men in Morocco and only one can win the grand final of the world's strongest man on BBC One at 7 o'clock. Police work now on BBC One, but not as we know it. James Belushi could do with a little help, and it's a wet old night. You think that's funny, Chiphead? You know, I could pull your battery and kill you. So don't get cocky. Twenty-seven oh seven to control. Control twenty-seven oh seven. Yes, message check. I'm waiting for a friendly named Freddy. He's a no-show. Is there any uh, call-ins from him? Control 
Alright, 10-4, uh, I have a request to open a phone channel. Attach me through to 555-3312, please. Calling your girlfriend to tell her you're gonna be late is not essential communication. You should know that by now, 2707. Clear. Clear, 10-4. Thanks for nothing, Control. Pretend I'm not here, okay? I'll be a second. Hundred dollar bottle of champagne. She's worth it. Ah, damn the machines on, you know? 